It's Hockey Night in New England, presented by Berkshire Bank, the official bank of Bruins cover John Nesson. It comes your way live from Prudential Center in downtown Newark, New Jersey, where tonight the Bruins complete their three-game season series against the New Jersey Devils. And hello again, everybody, high above the ice, and I mean high <laughs> above the ice, alongside Andy Brickley with Garrett Austin way down there. I'm Jack Edwards. Well, Brick, the numbers are kind of ugly, but sometimes you just got to bust the numbers right in the chops. The uh, Bruins have scored more than one goal just one time in their last 11 games. They've won just one of their last eight, and they are still in that number eight slot in the Eastern Conference. So they are the target team for a team the likes of New Jersey, which can shut it down defensively, especially at home. So maybe ugly is beautiful on this evening. The Bruins got to go to the dirty parts of the ice, and they got to score some of those grimy goals. Yeah, those grimy goals come between the dodge that you make a uh, beeline for the net, so to speak. You got to get inside position. You can't be allowed to be boxed out. You got to have that will to score, and you got to get hungry, and whatever it takes to win is the mentality for the Bruins right now. Well, when it comes down to the last 20 games of the regular season, and after tonight, it'll be 20 games to go in the regular season. You just have to beat the teams that are below you in the overall NHL standings of both the Devils tonight and the Arizona Coyotes tomorrow night in Boston. 5.30 start for that strange one are below the Bruins. The Bruins just 2-6-2 two, and two on the backside of back-to-backers, so uh, a cautionary note there, but these are two games they really got to have. It almost doesn't matter who they're playing, really, when you think about it. But, yeah, these are two teams that are below the Bruins in the standings, teams that they really should beat. But there are no easy games in the National Hockey League. New Jersey, take a look at the numbers. There are a couple of games below 500. You know, they still feel that they have a playoff push in them. So expect their A game tonight. And they've been very good here at the Rock. Ten of their wins out of those 15 have come in the last 14 games here in this building. So expect them to be uh, hungry tonight as well. And then, of course, tomorrow, you don't want to look too far ahead, but tomorrow you got the Coyotes coming in town, third-worst team in the league, and they have a real uh, tough time playing and scoring and winning on the road. So you're looking at a four-point weekend. That's certainly the goal. You know, my broadcast partner's been twitching a lot less lately, and that's a good thing because every <laughs> once in a while through the years, I've noticed that during a power play, he kind of goes, eh, eh, you know, that sympathetic response when he wants to see something happen that's not happening. Since Claude Julien changed personnel, especially on the first power play unit, things have been clicking really well. The Bruins have been getting a attacking rhythm even when they haven't been scoring power play goals and a couple of the kids are the key keys to the game yeah at one time when you try to have two balanced power plays you want Krug on one Hamilton on the other but when you need goals and goals are at a premium right now for the Bruins pretty good idea to tear these guys up on the back end in today's NHL you need mobile puck moving defense but the Bruins have two of the best and when you think about how young they are and how much NHL career they have in front of them you're really in good shape. Tory Krug got the 11 goals. That leads the Bruins. He's got 30 points. Uh, he's had a goal three assists in his last seven. That's pretty decent production, especially when you're talking about a defenseman. Dougie Hamilton's been even more productive with his seven points in his last eight. He leads the Bruins defense with 34 points. So these two guys bring a skating game with an offensive hockey IQ and some creativity that allow the Bruins to have a pretty good weapon on the back end. The New Jersey Devils yesterday bid adieu to Yarmir Yager. One of the all-time great scorers, ranked fifth all-time. They got a second-round draft choice. It could be as high as 42 and a conditional third for him. It's the Bees and Devils. We're back in a flash. Boston Bruins Hockey on Nesson is brought to you by Ace Ticket, by Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin', by Chappie. Humanity's last hope is not human. In theaters, March 6th. By Eversource, now one company provides the energy that brings us together. And by Toyota's official website for deals, buyatoyota.com. Minutes away from face-off at the Prudential Center, you heard Jack and Brick talking about the Bruins' power play. Tell me why it's been a little bit better lately. Yeah, we got a little breakdown to show you some things that they're doing better, and a lot of it has to do with formation, the man in the middle. And here we're going to show you against the Blackhawks, Bergeron. He's going to really get everybody's attention. And having in the middle of the ice, Brick calls it the, the, the bumper play, the kind of that bumper position. It brings the opponent to him, and it really opens up opportunities or lanes for the Bruins. And the other thing the Bruins are doing very well, Dale, is they're limiting the amount of time that they're holding on to the puck. Here again, we stop at Bergeron. He takes two guys. That allows for the odd man situation on the other side. Louis Erickson with a little redirection here. Look how quickly they move it. One, two, three, four. I mean, these are seconds, not even milliseconds, as they move the puck around again. Bergeron attracts three guys in the middle of the ice. 
Kurt going to try and go back door. The Bruins don't end up getting the pats across that they want as Lucas Spiza takes it away. But Bergeron is going to find himself, bam, right there in the middle of the ice for an opportunity. Quick puck movement, good mood middle of the ice area. That's what it's been about for the Bruins PP. Let's get to New Jersey. Jack Edwards and Andy Brickley. Dale, Billy, thank you very much. We're at Prudential Center. Starting goalies brought to you by your New England Audi dealers. Experience the new Audi A3 with legendary Audi Quattro all-wheel drive tonight. Nicholas Fedberg's last win came all the way back on the 8th of January. Had to make only 14 stops in a 3-0 shutout win over the same New Jersey Devils. At the other end of the ice, Marblehead, Massachusetts native Corey Schneider. Sensational goals against average and save percentage at home. But you can see by the one lost record, just four more wins than regulation losses. He has not been getting a whole lot of goal support, whether it has been home or away. Lou Lamorello in late December fired Peter DeBoer and took over behind the bench. Adam Oates runs the forward. Scott Stevens, the defenseman. The game is on. It's all about two points at this point, Brick, isn't it? It is, and whatever it takes to win. And you talked about Schneider and how well he can play and the way the Devils historically play defense and try to shut you down. You're going to have to really earn everything tonight, which means beat people one-on-one -on -one to get inside position. Matt Barkowski fans on the pass, and Elias throws it right through the goal mouth. Andy Green all the way around to Patrick Elias, who has hit the 400 goals, 600 assists, and 1,000 point marks during this season. Adam Henrique out of the corner of the backhand off Bergeron stick. Elias bottom of the circle and a save by Svedberg. Long rebound. Adam Larson's driving another save by Svedberg, but a 40-foot rebound. Green wheels it back to Elias. High slot. Henrique's shot and a save by Svedberg coming off his line. Elias, good attacking zone time for the Devils already. Andy Green hammers one wide. Bergeron calms things down, chips it off the linesman's leg. Comes right back to Bergeron over the line. His shot goes off Larson's skate and hits the end board. Pretty active shift by that line. Elias, very active in the offensive zone. Really went to be that third high guy. Daniel Pye's shot. A save by Schneider and a rebound. Soderbergh slings it around. This comes all the way back to the Boston zone. But decision making is going to be at such a premium tonight. And little mistakes such as Matt Parkowski fanning on the pass turned into a long series of Devils chances. And here's Zidlitsky out near the blue line. He Wrists it off the boards. Jordan Tutu going into the end wall against Soderberg. Pae taps back to Soderberg. Again, Daniel Pae on the left wing of Carl Soderberg and Louis Erickson on the right wing. Erickson takes Charles Long lead out. Tosses it past John Merrill and chases into the corner. Merrill gets body position, but the pass goes past Camilleri. Here's Spooner. The shot just wide on the glove side. Ryan Spooner looking for his first NHL goal, and this is 35th career NHL regular season game. Nice chip and chase by Erickson. Pye with his great speed. He's in there. Good support to create that loose puck. And then Spooner's the third man coming off the bench right down the middle of the offensive zone. Merrill deliberately out. Through to Martin Havlat. Scott Gomez chips it just wide. Gomez picks it up in the corner. David Pasternak back for his first touch of the game. Pulls it away from Havlat. Now Lucic over the NJ stylized logo at center ice. Green stabbing at the puck. And he comes away with it. Andy Green working it out of the defensive zone. Off the boards, gives it away to Chara. Milan Lucic tumbles it towards Schneider. He comes out to play it safely over to Larson. Larson's found the scoring touch recently. Brian Furland chugs down into the corner. Works against Larson. Kelly rakes it out of there, skates. Now races for it in the other corner. Indirect to Hamilton. The return pass goes past Kelly all the way to Caron. Circling against Havlat. Caron chucks the backhand to Furlan. He tumbles it off the backhand, so Larson pokes it off the boards out to center. Hamilton wants to throw it in deep, and it goes into the New Jersey bench. Opportunities at both ends, uh, both ends of the ice. It's now with New Jersey. Henrique's going to find that open seam in the slot area. Bruce got a little lost in coverage. Seidberg tries to react in time, but Henrique gets that shot away. And then the Bruins, it's a pretty good play right here. Chip it, Chase, try to get it back. Here comes the support. Pae from across the middle of the ice. Jumps on that loose puck. Makes a perfect tape-to-tape -tape pass. Spooner just misses on the glove side. Smith can't get the puck through. Eliashi banks it off the boards. Henrique 
Sends the backhand all the way in behind Spedberg. The Boston goalie plays it around to Brad Marchand. Tuka Rask not feeling well, isn't even dressed for this game. The Bruins called up Jeremy Smith from Providence. So he is opening and closing the door at the far end of the bench. Rask's streak of 18 consecutive games in which he has appeared comes to an end. And that ties a regular season career high for him. Henrique out at the blue line, cross ice, it gets through to Zidlitsky off of Erickson's stick. Steve Bernier rams it through the corner. Henrique chips it back across to Zidlitsky. Zidlitsky all the way to the goal line, swivels the backhand for Eliash at the post, but Louis Erickson is all over him. Erickson off the corner boards, Pae reaches out, drags it along. Bernier moves the skates in order to block the pass from Pae, but it still tumbles in deep in the New Jersey zone. Zdano Char to the half boards, takes a little bump from Jordan Tutu and gets thrown offline, can't control the puck. Tutu takes Eric Jelena's pass. Mike Camilleri's on one of those tears that he's been on from time to time in his career. Travis Zajac looking for Camilleri in the middle. And Mark Frazier out at the blue line, exchanges high shots with Daniel Pae. Yeah, if you're a D-man, obviously you're looking for Camilleri every time he's on the ice, know where he is. And you saw what Zidlicki will do, Jack. He'll jump into that offensive zone, he'll roam, he'll come down that right side. So if you're a winger on that side of the ice, you gotta have your head in the swivel. There's a chance for Lucic! Shelena going down, and the Bruins unable to cash in. Great play by Pasternak. On the forecheck, in open ice, able to steal this puck and find Lucic coming late. Tries to field that puck, gets it out a little bit far in front of him, but just out muscles Jelena off the puck. And now Lucic has got a prime scoring chance in that high slot after a great play by the kid. Milan Lucic with just one goal and two assists in his last nine games coming into tonight. Jordan Caron to Chris Kelly fires it from the boards all the way in on Schneider, and the Bruins will get an attacking zone faceoff out of this. You know, I know it was a line change when Spooner got his opportunity, Jack, on the nice pass from Pai. But his line is he in the middle with Lucic on the left, Pasternak on the right, and Lucic already with a prime scoring chance. So two-thirds of that line already heard from after the great play by Pasternak. Spinner against Gomez, Lucic rescues the puck back to Barkowski, he swivels the backhand off the boards, Lucic in one motion right in on Schneider and Pasternak unable to jam it past. Zidlitsky losing his balance gives to Gomez who was under the weather and did not take part in this morning's skate but is out there for the game. Nice touch pass, Lucic to Spoon to three on two over the line with Pasternak, the shot saved by Schneider, long rebound. Pasternak whacks the backhand to Seidenberg, he wheels it over to Barkowski, the wrist shot through the screen, does not get through to Schneider. And Dinah Subris lugs it up ice. The pass goes behind Gomez all the way through to Havlat. Lucic finds it, knocking it down for Barkowski's clear. Pasternak lifts the stick of green, holds the puck and keeps possession, regrouping in the neutral zone before dumping in for Kelly. And now Pasternak changes out. Bruins looking for some attacking zone rhythm here after getting a couple of decent chances. Perron in the corner. Furlan also jamming for the puck. Kelly squibs it cross ice. McQuaid, who's been walking with a limp, but has strapped it up and ready to go, sends it around. Kelly firing into the circle off Adam Larson. And now it's Furlan at the hash marks. Larson sends the puck ahead. Tory Krug. D to D to McQuaid. Yeah, and, and to lend some symmetry to that line, Jack. Then Pasternak followed up with a pretty good chance coming through the neutral zone with some speed. Let that wrist shot go from inside the tops of the circle. Larson off Camilleri's stick. Spedberg can't glove it. Chara chops it through the corner past Camilleri all the way back to the New Jersey line. The Devils ice it. Vote for the Amica coverage play of the week and enter to win a $100 gift certificate to the Pro Shop at TD Garden, courtesy of Nesson. Enter now at Nesson.com slash Amica coverage can. Patrice Bergeron took 31 face-offs against Vancouver. 
It's the most any Bruins player has taken since they started tracking that stat individually in 1998. Riley Smith gives to Brad Marsh and can't hold his line as Fraser puts the shoulder in. Travis Zajac whips it over to Camilleri. Cross ice, it's in Tutu skates. Riley Smith circles low. Yeah, good back check by Bergeron. Just had to put his head down and grind it out, try to catch Tutu. Merrill almost turns the puck over at his own blue line. Jacob Josephson back inside the New Jersey zone. Tomo Rutu circling right in front of Fraser. Merrill very deliberate with the puck. Games involving the New Jersey Devils average fewer goals scored per game than any other team in the NHL. The Devils are content to play for two to one. Steven Gianta. Barkowski caves him in down to his knees, but Gianta gets right back up. Josephson tries to cycle it. Gianta right along the goal line, but Barkowski reaches in and Seidenberg giving him some trouble from behind. Barkowski, the long diagonal. Pae catches it in stride on the turn and tosses it softly to the opposite corner. Green gives it away to Erickson to Pae. He scores! Daniel Pae, after 36 straight without a goal, has goals in consecutive games. Both of them for a 1-0 lead. And the Bruins have a very important first goal. Yeah, you can take this all the way back to the breakout pass by Matt Barkowski, deep in his own zone to the left of Stedberg. Beautiful pass, good read, good delivery. Now the Bruins get a little something coming through the neutral zone. It's a good cross-corner dump with a purpose. Soderberg, the initial pressure, the bad turnover by New Jersey. And a beautiful triangle, and Pae, who started the play with a cross-corner dump, gets to the front of the net. One-timer, no chance for Schneider. Ryan Spooner, around past Milan Lucic. David Pasternak can't toss the bean bag in front. And Adam McQuaid will skate back to the dots, and it's icing off of Martin Havlat's clear. Uh, pretty straightforward goal when you think about it, Jack. You know, just fundamentals. But it starts with that breakout. I mean, as a forward, you love when a defenseman delivers a pass like that. You're able to walk out of your own zone. You relieve pressure. And you can see the interchange by the wings, you know, depending on when you get out there in the line change, you have to go to a certain area of the ice just because you're a left wing or a right wing. You have to end up in the right area defensively in your zone first. So a quality breakout leads to good things up ice. Lucic steals from Merrill, and the shot goes off Merrill's stick up into the protective netting. Daniel Pai for so long stuck on one, two, and three coming consecutive games. And the Bruins have the first goal tonight in New Jersey. Oh, Danny Pai is going to give the Bruins the lead. He was in the middle of the ice. He rotates in this direction here. The passing lane, perfect for Matt Barkowski to deliver the breakout pass. Nice read and react, way to get open. Defense loved that. Forwards love perfect passes. And then the Bruins go into the three-man forecheck. Soderberg, body contact on Larson. Good read down the wall by Erickson for the perfect steal. Bad decision by New Jersey defense. Pai wide open, well executed. Three-zone play. Brian Furlan, the self-pass off the end boards, working against Mark Fraser. Now it's Kelly against Gomez, who's under the weather. Kelly comes off the half boards. The tip by Furlan. Rebound, Caron going for it, but Fraser belts it off the kick plate. Azubra slides the backhand over to Eric Jelena, a hard-shooting defenseman who loves to jump up on the play. Barkowski bumps into Havlat. Now Seidenberg tries to shove the puck past the big body. Zubris, who has gone ice cold in terms of producing points. Kelly jabs the puck forward to Furlan, ahead to Karan. He has to one-hand it around Jelenai in on Schneider. Bruins change out behind the dump in. Devils have gone more than nine minutes without a shot on goal in this game. Steve Bernier self-pass around Tory Krupp, but there's Bergeron on the diagonal. Bernier hard to the corner. The Bruins have limited New Jersey to 42 shots on goal total in two complete games. What did Boston have against Vancouver? 41 a few nights ago. Krug over to McQuaid. 
Straight ahead for Smith. The puck bobbles around at the blue line. Smith takes the check from Green to get it deep. Bernier swings it around. And here's Adam Larson. Larson's scoring has gone up dramatically since a few days after Lou Lamorello took control of the team. Erickson fishing for the puck. Pae has to wait in the neutral zone and then waffles it to the end boards. Larson slings it over to Andy Green. Hamilton turns, beats Zajac to it. Camilleri squirts it through the circle, but Louis Erickson wants transition, decides the better of it, and wheels it over to Pae. Now Soderberg cuts inside, gives to Chara. Soderberg, a wicked collision with Tutu. Hamilton, the drive and a save by Schneider. Erickson picks up the puck, bottom of the circle, patient with it, throws it into the middle. Pae getting worked over, maintains his balance, chips it cross ice. Camilleri reaches for the puck, and Hamilton manages to force it forward into the zone as the Bruins want to change. Camilleri streaking through the neutral zone, backhands it softly on Spedberg, and Bartkowski has to steer it back to the Boston goalie. Daniel Pae has the Bruins in front. Two points they got to have. Shots are 9-1 to one Boston. After being traded to the Florida Panthers, Yager Yager's teammates said his presence would be missed on and off the ice. Corey Schneider said that he was such a presence on this team. But like they say, Jack, this is a business. <laughs> well, yeah, what's this now? Uh, eight different teams for Yager. Not even including the international play representing his country. Lou Lamorella says it's tough to trade a person. It's a lot easier to trade a player. you got to do what's best for your team. And New Jersey gets uh, a second rounder from Florida, which could be as high as 42 in what's expected to be a very deep draft this spring. Barkowski with a big hit against Rutu and a conditional third pick, the higher of two Florida picks that it owns right now in 2016. Eric Jelena swinging a miss. Jelena's got a tremendous one-time shot, but hard to make contact with a puck coming 90 degrees to you when you're out at the blue line. And even at 40-plus uh, years old for Yermer Yager, what is he, 43, Jack? Yeah. You know, still fairly productive. You know, right around that 30-point plateau in 57 games for a team that doesn't really generate a ton of offense. You know, when Yager was traded, he was third on the team in goals, third on the team in assists. Not bad for a guy who's... Almost ready to start qualifying for the pension. Merrill swings it around to the corner. Pasternak guns it middle, looking for Spooner in the crease, but Spooner tied up and lost his footing. Gomez over the line, the wrist shot saved by Spedberg. Two full feet outside the blue paint. Havlat stick handling. Hamilton knocks that down. Dougie Hamilton's play really improving in the last four or five games. After a shaky spell that young defensemen seem to go through, the Bruins break up ice four on three. Pasternak drills one in on Schneider, rides up over the glass and into the protective netting. So coming into this game, the wild card race, the Bruins nine points behind the top Eastern wild card, the Washington Caps, despite having two games in hand, that almost seems like it's over the horizon. And the Bruins in a position where they can pretty much put an end to New Jersey's hopes. Because New Jersey not only has to make up the points, which are considerable, eight points, but it's got to get past five teams. Yeah, we always talk about uh, the Bruins and, and their approach is to look ahead. You know, the teams that are ahead of you that they're trying to catch. But given the situation that they're in right now, that they put themselves in, you have to pay attention to those teams directly behind you in the race for the wild card. Riley Smith dragging it away from Adam Larson, the long diagonal, a little offline as his stick got hit on the follow through. Crew slings the puck through both corners. 6.20 to go in the opening period. Shots on goal are 10-3 in favor of Boston. It was almost 11 minutes into the game before Mike Camilleri got a soft backhand in on Nicholas Spedberg. Chara, a careful indirect pass for Pae. Laterally for Erickson with Soderberg on the net drive. The pass hits Soderberg in the skates. Erickson rescues it back to the point. Chara's long wrist shot, and Schneider makes a kick save. Tutu takes a hit from Soderberg. Erickson intercepts the pass. Pie in front, Soderberg's shot. Fraser blocks it down. 
And this one is going to go directly up and over as Tutu chips it out of the zone. Are they going to call a delay of game yep, penalty yep. on him? They certainly look as if they're consulting on it, and the Bruins are going to have the man advantage and a chance for a 2-0 lead. Well, Jordan Tutu is going to pick up his 61st minute in penalties this year. A guy that's known for his physical play and a tough character. But he's going to send this puck up over the glass from the defensive zone. He'll go to the box. The Bruins on the power play. The power play stats are brought to you by Echo Store Technologies. The Bruins have had 14 power play opportunities in their last four games. I mean, that's an unbelievable amount for a Boston team. <laughs> and it's the most they've had since they had 14 in a four-game span in games two through five of the regular season way back in October. So here's that first unit going to work. Spooner in Krejci's place. Dougie Hamilton and Tori Krug out. High ears Hamilton to Krug all the way down to the dot. He's got Spooner on the far side. Erickson's the man near the post, and the bumper is... Patrice Bergeron, the puck whistling right past him and bouncing over to Spooner. He draws Jacob Josephson and Andy Green. Bergeron bumps it back to Spooner. He's got Erickson down low, slings it to him. The triangle's all over the place. Spooner working it over to Hamilton, to Krug, moving with the puck in front. Bergeron to Erickson. Schneider makes the save, jamming for the puck, and it squirts loose to the corner. Spooner gets the shoulder inside on Josephson, but Green is able to win the scramble and throw it the length of the rink. There's that mobility. Krug able to carry that puck from the left point. There was no shot available. He was looking for that initially, but he was able to create that passing lane. He was looking for Bergeron on the first pass, but it got all the way to Erickson. Power play brought to you by your New England Mazda dealers. David Pasternak at the hash marks. John Merrill wrists it right to Pasternak. Pasternak past Eliash. Chara indirect goes past Pasternak. Soderberg takes the hit from Fraser. Pasternak whips it to Smith to pass a little bit offline. And it comes all the way back to the Boston zone. Maybe a little too eager. Uh, the puck went on edge. The idea was good. The pass was a good decision. Just went on edge as he released it. And the puck just took off. Lucic moving the puck quickly, but that also tumbles, and it causes an offside. Well, a nice exchange out high between the two defensemen that we highlighted at the top of the show, Hamilton and Krug. Krug's going to get that mobility going. He gets down below the circle, top of the circle, just before the dot. He's looking for the redirect from either player in that power eye. Bergeron in the slot. Erickson at the top of the crease. Overhead shows just how close Boston came to extending the lead. Pasternak loves to sling it around. <laughs> really bold in terms of moving the puck and carrying the puck and taking on opposing defenders. Here is David Pasternak. We're going to get Fraser goes outside inside on him. Good angle from Zobris to cut off the rush from David Pasternak. Camilleri bunts it over to Merrill. One shot on goal during Tutu's penalty. Lots of possession for the Bruins. They had 36 seconds right off the bat, but could only get that one shot during that time in the attacking zone. Kelly blocks the centering pass. Second chance, Camilleri. A save by Spedberg. Throws it in front. The Bruins have numbers up ice. It's four on two. Havlat getting back, but here's Pasternak across for Kelly. Pasternak feathers the puck through the corner. Gives to Kelly the shot off. Green stick hits glass. Seidenberg jumps up. Furlan rotating back. Has it. And fires it over to Bartkowski. Center circle. Caron angles it to the end boards. Zidlitsky. Caron steals. This is off Henrique's stick. Adam Henrique gathers up the puck, cuts back, and waits for reinforcements as the Bruins change out. Jack, we talked about the fourth line in the pregame show. Good shift right there. Furlan really controlling the puck in the offensive zone. He tried to find Kelly on that four-on-two rush. It was just a little bit too far in front. Kelly had to slow down. He thought the passing lane was a little bit back than it was. They just missed, but they stay with it. Good offensive zone time. Good steal by Kelly. Nearly had Corona in front of the net. What's that the baseball players say all summer long? Stay within yourself. Brian Furlan has done that. He has not tried to do too much, and he has filled the box nicely. Riley Smith draws Josephson and gives to Marshan. He darts through the seam. Smith to Marshan can't get the shot on goal. Around through the corner. Hamilton jumps up, takes a hit from Rutu, who loves to bang. Riley Smith bounces it cross corner. Marshan sets the edges, cannot hold off Larson, and the puck trickles all the way to the Boston line. Larson, 13 points in his last 21 games, shortly after Lou Lamorello took over. He had 13 points in his previous 85, which is more than a regular season 
of 82. So something has changed dramatically, and Adam Larson's point production has shot upward just as New Jersey has needed it. Pae taking Erickson's feet. Speaking of point production, shooting upward. Daniel Pae suddenly finding the scoring touch in the last couple of games. Yeah, that got blocked by Larson, didn't it? Doing the job at both ends. 2-2 two -two goes shoulder to shoulder with Char. I guess who wins that one? Erickson spoons it forward. Spooner gloves it down, gets the next touch, and fires it wide of Schneider. Schneider off the back of his own goal. Fraser gives back to Eric Zelenoff. Lucic. Makes a little bit of contact. Zelenov stumbles. Now Pasternak races onto the puck in the corner, turns it to the backhand, back to the forehand. Barkowski off the boards, draws 2-2, fires it, looking for Lucic's backup tip. Seidberg runs over Eliash and drills the puck in deep in the final minute of the first period. The Bruins playing very strongly and taking the attack to New Jersey throughout this first 20 minutes. Jelena bangs the puck off the boards. It's a giveaway to Barkowski. He closes all the way to the goal line. Pasternak's drive whistles wide. And again, Lucic looking for a net front knockdown tip. Attacking zone time for the Bruins here in the final 30 seconds of the period. Lucic tries to dangle inside Henrique, but muscles Eliash off the puck. Fraser lifts it along the end boards. Pasternak picks it up. What attacking zone time for the Bruins here late in the first. Pasternak tries to cross ice pass intended for Spooner. McQuaid swiveling down low gets knocked to an E on Fraser's hit. And after a minute of zone time for the Bruins, the Devils clear. Quick re-entry in the final 10 seconds. Pasternak shot off. Jelenot tries again. And Jelenot with another block along with Fraser. And the horn sounds, but the Bruins just tilt the ice and pour it on to Corey Schneider for 20 minutes. Yeah, good period by Boston. After the first shift of the game, when Jersey really had the only opportunities, Boston put it in gear, and they had a puck in the offensive zone a lot. Pasta and I doing a nice job on this last shift to hunt pucks down, make plays. Two real good pinches, one by Barkowski, another one actually twice on the offside by uh, Dennis Seidenberg, keeping the puck in the offensive zone. Great effort in the opening 20, got the lead. This is the way they want to play against New Jersey. The Road Ahead brought to you by Sullivan Tire and Auto Service. Visit SullivanTire.com slash Road Ahead. So you're wondering why are the Bruins playing at 5.30 tomorrow night? Well, NBC selected Saturday night for its exclusive window for the Rangers-Flyers game. An 8 p.m. start on NBC, so everybody has to work around that. And the Bruins are going to start at 5.30 because you can't go head-to-head -head on any television network against NBC. That's the way the national television deal works. Trade deadline special is Monday. I'm Nesson. And then they'll lock the door and say who's here. And Calgary comes to town. We we'll wonder if Mark Giordano is going to be okay. Sure hope so because that Calgary team is a really exciting club. They're on the island tonight. Alongside Andy Brickley with Garrett Austin at ice level and our Nesson production crew, I'm Jack Edwards. The Bruins have a 1-0 lead on the New Jersey Devils after the first 20 minutes, courtesy of Daniel Paez's second goal in as many games. The Coors, timeless moments. Fitting musical backdrop here. And November 18th, 1989, Brick had a four-point night, including his first career hat trick. The Bruins beat the Devils 6-4. In Boston, look at that handsome devil. Take it right to the dirty area. Score on the rebound. He was plus three for the game. Scored the hat trick on six shots on goal. Look where these goals are coming from. Is there a lesson here, Brick? <laughs> Go to the dirty areas. Nice they put you out there at the end with the empty net, huh? Got to be responsible, Jack. It's a beautiful thing. Little Amarello. The stern gaze from behind the New Jersey bench has never gotten over letting you go. <laughs> Game summary brought to you by your New England Chevy dealers. So a pretty good start for the Bruins, but again, they need to finish. And Corey Schneider, as good as he is, and he was really good in the first period, still giving up, giving up rebounds almost every goal he does. Grace Bergeron along the boards. Sends it in deep. Andy Green holding off Brand Marchand. Goes right up the middle. Patrick Eliash to reach the 1,200-game plateau in his NHL career in what has been a 
milestone filled season for him. Bergeron, a beautiful move around. Elias races into the attacking zone. Marchand on the net drive. Bergeron shot saved by Schneider, and there is no rebound. Well, Bergeron doing it the full 200 feet. As he does every night. You know, the more you watch this guy, the more you have an appreciation for what an astounding player he is. And how humble he is. It's all about the result. He could not care less about his individual statistics. Whether he's a minus in the game and the team wins, he's delighted. John Merrill up off Camilleri's stick. Hamilton nudges the puck to Chara. Quick puck movement by the Bruins, and Pae gets it in deep. Schneider slings it along the glass. Camilleri gloves it down. Merrill shoves it back to Camilleri. Pae digs it loose and sends the puck into the end board. Zedlitsky having trouble with Erickson. Now Soderbergh comes out and tries to rake it out of the air skates. Erickson pokes away. Zedlitsky hacks at it. Soderbergh A-frame. Zajac unloads on Soderbergh. That loosens the puck. John Merrill skates it forward and gives to Camilleri. Camilleri's got Zajac far side, sends it to the corner. 2-2 looked for a hit from Hamilton, and Hamilton sort of said, I'm going to give it to you. No, I'm not. 2-2 turns the puck over. Erickson throws it twice into Jelena's legs. Chara softly. Camilleri steals, goes right to the post, and Spedberg shuts him down. Don't miss out on Bruins hockey, presented by the Massachusetts State Lottery during the month of March. Secure your seat now to see the Bruins take on the Red Wings, Rangers, Lightning, and more. To purchase tickets, visit bostonbruins.com or use the Bruins mobile app. Camilleri with five goals and an assist for six points in four consecutive games coming into tonight. Yeah, try to try, try to make that little backhand pass where you only lift the puck just high enough to get over the blade of the stick. Just didn't get it high enough. Didn't quite get it there. Right? <laughs> Seidenberg with Gomez coming. Barkowski patient with the puck. Showed pass. Now eats it as Gomez pressures and goes D to D to Seidenberg. Back to Barkowski. He chips it past Havlat. Seidenberg spins it off the boards. Kelly chips it ahead of Furlan. Furlan bangs hard against Fraser. Now Kelly on the follow-up. Shelanow tries to poke it away from Furlan, who wins the puck to Kelly, tries to shovel it through the seam to Caron. Barkowski's drive, tipped by Furlan, and a nifty save by Schneider, getting the left leg pad down, but Seidenberg keeps it in the zone. Kelly's quick shot, Caron knocks it loose. Furlan tried to go forehand, backhand, couldn't maintain position. Gets it to Kelly, the drive, save, juicy rebound, past the top of the circle for the Bruins in the middle of a change. Some alert play by Brian Furlan and Chris Kelly in the middle of a few sequences. Pasternak slings it middle. Spooner pursuing the puck. The Bruins again just pouring it on in the attacking zone. Yeah, there's that fourth line again for you, Jack. We talked about having the trust in that line and their ability to bring lots of energy, body contact. Kelly's actually trying to make a play to the slot to Karan, but it gets deflected back by Kowski with a good shot. Gets all the way to the net. Furlan gets inside position. We talked a lot about that, too. He gets a little piece of the shot from the point. Schneider makes the stop. There was a rebound and then a follow-up opportunity. Again, as the Bruins keep the pressure in the offensive zone. Spooner does a good job to win the faceoff with his skate, kicking it to the sideboards to Seidenberg. Now Lucic with Jelena coming hard. Jelena pins Lucic in. Lucic keeps the feet moving, gets it loose, but Spooner can't knock down the Havlat pass, bringing it wide to Zubris. Zubris wearing Pasternak all the way across the attacking line. Seidenberg the next layer. Steven Gianta spins the puck through the corner. Barkowski holds off Josephson, goes indirect to Pasternak. Pasternak, hard cross ice, but it's behind Lucic. Josephson goes back to knock the puck down for Zidlitsky. Zidlitsky forward. Rutu spins it to Josephson. Josephson lobs the puck through the corner. Svedberg nudges it along to Krug. Krug hard off the skates of Riley Smith. Krug up the boards. Josephson right into Bergeron's legs. Josephson tries again. Krug steps, steps over the deadwood. Gianta had broken his stick. And here's Bergeron from Marche. He bounces it into the corner. Riley Smith shoulder to shoulder with Larson and wins the battle. Bergeron hard indirect for Krug. He handles it nicely. Gets it back from Marchand. That flutters off the stick of Bernier to the end boards. Marchand rotates high. Tries to give it to Krug. Elias with a good stick check to get the puck out to center. 
Bergeron at the attacking line, backhands it in deep, and the Bruins go to work again. New Jersey with trouble all night getting it out of its own zone as the Bruins have brought the four-checking pressure. Adam Henrique tries to knock it along with a mid-air touch, but McQuaid plays the body. Yeah, good gap right there by McQuaid. Didn't back off too soon. He must turn that puck right up the ice away from Henrique. Bergeron steals the puck in the neutral zone and dumps in so the Bruins can get a clean change. Adam Larson has Travis Zajac circling right in front of him. Larson up to the red line, wrists it through the corner. Spedberg knocks it down right into Hamilton's legs, but Hamilton handles it with poise. Gives it past Zajac to the board. Zajac turns. Now Camilleri in the backhand off a stick, and it goes shoulder high all the way to the boards. Zajac to 2 2, but he loses control on the forehand as he turns off the half boards, and Erickson brings it back for Boston. Fires it cross corner looking for Soderberg against Zidlitsky. Hammers it around. Erickson tries to control. Camilleri gets there first and gives to Green. He eludes Soderberg. Chucks the backhand off the boards. 2 2 looked as if he was doing that short chip shot out of the bunker <laughs> next to the Green. He wanted to shorten up but couldn't get out of the zone. I like the concept, though, by uh, what Erickson and Soderberg were trying to do. Erickson goes cross corner. That allows Soderberg to get to the puck first, and then he tries to transfer the puck to the other side of the ice for possession. Here's that Kelly line, the fourth line again. Gregory Campbell's still out. They say he's going to be out about a week with an upper body injury. Brian Furlan getting in the way of Rutu's pass, and that's over the glass at the penalty benches. Tomorrow morning on Dining Playbook, Billy and Jenny come to you from Beat Hotel in Cambridge. Here from Red Sox outfielder Mookie Betts on his favorite foods and restaurants, plus Billy Koss is in the kitchen with Blue Ox chef Matt O'Neill. All that more tomorrow morning at 9 on Dining Playbook. All right, Brick, so the Bruins have 11 minutes of attacking zone time in the first period and already a more than one-minute advantage in the second period over New Jersey, even though we're early in the second. But they still don't have the finish. What is the next step? What do they need to do more of? Well, some nights you're going to just play against a guy like Schneider. Green fires, gets the rebound. Because that was a shot with purpose low into the far side, but Spedberg was able to kick it far enough away from the pack of players that the Bruins are able to clear. Yeah, you can't get frustrated if you're Boston right now. Pasternak to Barkowski, the bomb just wide on the glove side. Barkowski looking for his first regular season goal in his 110th game. And every time you get an opportunity in the offensive zone, try to keep the shot within the posts. You don't do yourself any favor when you miss the net. Barkowski taking down Gomez shoulder to shoulder. Bruins changing out man by man behind the dump in. Here's Tory Krug. Quick couple of steps looking for Lucic, who can't redirect the tip in in front. Adam Henrique against McQuaid on the boards. Back to Havlat. Havlat for Eliash. The shot. And Svetberg makes a strong right to left push. Zidlitsky quick to Merrill. Merrill's wrist shot and a save by Svetberg coming out to confront Henrique and taking a little bump, but maintaining a good track on the puck. Bruins lead the Devils 1 0 mid second. 1-0 is score. Bruins on top of the Devils, and uh, Nicholas Svetberg getting the nod tonight. One of the reasons to Rask under the weather. And he's in the process, Jack, of kind of reestablishing that believability factor in the coaching staff as well as his teammates. So two important stops, one on Elias and the follow-up on Merrill. And even though they are incredibly difficult saves or of the spectacular variety, they're important. Coming into today, Tuka Rask was on 69 appearance pace, and that by most people's estimation is just too heavy a load to carry. What's Schneider on, about 80? Yeah. <laughs> Krug, the save by Schneider and a rebound all the way past the hash marks. Eliash loops it out, center circle. McQuaid laterally to Krug. He hammers it around through both corners. Marshan against Green. Green gets it ahead to Eliash, but Riley Smith is locked up with him. Eliash around to the far side. Bernier drops the shoulder into Barkowski. Marshan picks it up to the blue line to Smith. Bergeron and Green chase the puck to the corner. And Bergeron smacks Green. He spins around and goes down. Smith can't get the puck back to Hamilton as Eliash intercepts. Chara takes it away. Here comes Carl Soderberg. A jump in his stride all the way to the dot. Throws the backhand into the crease. Not in trouble with it. Pai had a swipe with an open side but couldn't manage to tuck it home. Chara out by the blue line, tumbles it to the corner. 
Soderberg works against Larson. Larson wraps him up and takes him strongly to the board. It was an awkward looking move by Soderberg, but was effective. Paeta Erickson dangles in front, but gets mashed between Henrique and Schneider. Erickson unable to complete it on the backhand. Soderberg's drive goes off Green's leg. Soderberg throws it off the far boards. Erickson had a broken stick, goes for new lumber as the Bruins mount attacking zone time here. Pie in front looking for Soderberg, and he couldn't tuck it home. Chara along the line to Hamilton. Hamilton. Down the boards, Chara risks it off of Green. Again, the Bruins with monster attacking zone time, but what can they do with it as the Devils are stuck far away from their bench here in the second period? Larson throws the puck off the boards and gets reinforcements on the ice. Chara turns his goal. Hamilton off the stick of Havlat. Merrill with Caron hustling forward. Gomez in front of the Boston bench, tips it past Barkowski. Barkowski skates back, picks it up, throws it just wide of Svedberg, who has to tip the puck as it tumbles past his net. Camilleri tries to fire it middle. Kelly rescues it, gives to Barkowski. Quick couple of strides to start it out of the Boston zone. Furlan recovers after the poke check from Zidlitsky. Merrill on the end boards. Good forechecking pressure by Caron. For Furlan goes to work. Digging along the kick play, winning it away from Gomez and Merrill. Merrill loses his stick. Indirect to Barkowski along the line to so Seidenberg. Swivels the backhand through the corner. Caron off a stick, bounces back to Seidenberg, goes off the boards past Gomez. Merrill picks it up, fires it up toward Camilleri, chips the backhand out. Good layers from Kelly on the diagonal, and Kelly intercepts once again in the neutral zone. Seidenberg without a stick as the Bruins broke two on one shift there. Havlat spooning it across the front, looking for Camilleri weak side. His pass off Pasternak. Caron delays, tries to scoop it forward. And if that one gets past Jelenov, Pasternak, all he has to do is settle a bouncing puck, and he's in alone on Schneider. Steven Gianta on the backhand, looking for Josephson middle. Barkowski swats it out of there. Barkowski goes to, uh, that's Lucic going to the near side. Pasternak chucks it cross ice. Spooner circles back and picks it up. The Bruins don't look slow now, do they? Well, they're moving the puck quick, and when you have execution and good rotation, you look a lot faster than you might be. Josephson sp spanks the puck away from Spooner. Lucic throws a dart to the dot. Gianta swerves at the center line and throws it in deep. New Jersey looks for a clean change past the midpoint of the second period. Bruins looking for better finish. They've had plenty of attacking zone time, but they need the finish. Eliash off, Char stick right in front past Zubras. Spooner ices it to take the pressure off. Well, the Bruins again with significant offensive zone time, and Soderberg's going to just take this puck wide. He's looking for a little stop and go move. And even though this isn't a clean looking play, it's effective to the front of the net. A couple of real near misses. IA had one. And then the Bruins are doing a nice job, Jack, of making plays from below the goal line. If they don't have clear shots to the net, it's back below the goal line. Keep the puck deep, win those battles along the wall, and then work the puck back to the front of the net. An effective shift by the Soderbergh line. Dougie Hamilton looking for Pasternak. That does not connect. Well, Carl Soderbergh's had a couple of chances in this game, and he is uh, riding what could end up by the end of the night being uh, tied for his longest goal drought in the NHL in his two plus seasons. He's gone 14 straight without a goal and he's a little bit frustrated. He's getting the chances, but he hasn't been able to put them in. Yeah, no more chances than he had in that game in Edmonton, remember? He might he, yeah. he get a chance for three or four goals in the first period alone. Claude Julian addressing it today, but... And that goes to when you ask me, Jack, and what the Bruins got to do here? I say, you can't get frustrated. You just got to keep grinding it out. Play your game. Short break, Berkshire Bank, rewind coming up right after this, and we'll look at Daniel Pye's second in two games. The exciting rewind is brought to you by Berkshire Bank, where no two customers are alive. We're going to rewind it back to the only goal in this hockey game from Danny Pye. We're going to get a couple looks at it. Great breakout pass by Matt Barkowski. That sets the play in motion, but there's still lots to be done. That cross-corner dump by Pye is done with a purpose. Lay in the corner, allow the first man to put pressure, and allows the read to be made on the left wing boards. 
by Louis Erickson, a quick transfer of the puck. Schneider couldn't get across in time, and Danny Paye, boy, it's fun to score goals. Vote for your favorite exciting rewind and enter the mortgage sweepstakes. Each month, Berkshire will give away great prizes, and at the end of the season, one winner will have their mortgage paid for a year. Go to Nesson.com slash Berkshire Bank for details. Life is exciting. Let Berkshire Bank help. Kimmel Timonen and his $3.5 million cap hit go to the Chicago Blackhawks in exchange for a second round pick in 2015 and a conditional pick in 2016. Timonen has struggled and has not played due to injury. He said the blood so, clots, uh, right? Yeah, like uh, April, I think. Has not played at all this season. But, uh, Chicago trying to beef up in the absence of Patrick Kane. Patrick Elias can't swivel the puck past Bartkowski, who makes the skate block. Here's Marchand with a little bit of speed. He's got Riley Smith in the middle. Marchand's shot challenges Schneider. The rebound almost all the way to the dot. Bernier up the board. Seidenberg gets involved with Zubras. Berger on the touch pass. Marchand's shot trickles through Larson and slowly drifts all the way to Schneider. Nice little reach touch pass in that high slot area by Bergeron to keep the play alive after a nice strong stand-in by Seidenberg at the right point. It's a pretty good battle right there, kicking it, great with his skates. Marcia tries to use Larson as that screen, but Larson gets a piece of it. Marcia had that good shot too, Jack. Patrick Deliash took an errant stick from his teammate Dinah Zubris. Martin Havlat can't knock down the long pass from Zidlitsky. Here's Soderberg on his horse. The shot saved by Schneider. No rebound for Paye, who won the race against Zidlitsky. Tomorrow afternoon at 4.30, check out Big Bad Bruins Live, presented by DCU, Digital Federal Credit Union. Get the latest trade deadline news and rumors and find out which Bruins will reign supreme as the DCU Hero of the Week. Stay on top of all things Bruins every week, all season long. Gomez wins the face off away from Soderberg. Zidlitsky angles the puck off the boards. Havlat backhands it through to Gomez. Flings it too far forward for Henrique. Soderberg off the end wall. McQuaid straight ahead. Erickson redirects, gets it past Merrill, but Havlat's the next layer. Gomez cross ice. Krug shortens the hands together on the stick to get it forward to Pae. Can't wiggle it beyond Gomez. Gomez protects the puck, but then Soderberg gets a piece of the pass. Henrique into the middle, Erickson with the steal, patient with the puck, the pass offline for Krug, and he has to chase it back to the neutral zone. Scott Gomez has the free out as Soderberg was inside the line. McCray takes the brunt of a massive 2-2 hit in front, Kennelly, two shots and two saves as Svedberg stops the first one and then takes the care of on the rebound he gave up. Kelly spins the puck to Caron. Caron against Jelena. Jelena protects the puck, but off his attempted cross ice pass, it slides all the way to Schneider. When you take a look at the Devils, you just say, why is a guy like Jordan Tutu playing with a guy like Michael Camilleri? And this is the reason why. His ability to get it on the forecheck right off the bench. That's just a straight line, hard charge, body contact. Two real hard nosed plays. McQuaid, he knows the hit's coming. He wants to absorb that hit, try to make a play, but Tutu wins the battle. And a great pass to Camilleri, but what a stop by Svedberg. Quick left pad on the low drive one-timer, and then the camera back off Camilleri. Had to make a second save. Jordan Tutu listed at 5'9", 199 pounds. I mean, where would I put the extra 53 pounds, Brick? <laughs> jo Josephson holds it in the corner. Hamilton. Spooner redirects it off the boards through center. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Swelled head, right? <laughs> Sedlitsky circles in front of his own goal. You got a strong neck. <laughs> it took years to be able to sit up straight. Hamilton might get an interference penalty here as he ties up Steven Gianta. And it's going to be ruled tripping even though Gianta never went down. Hamilton releasing the stick so he didn't have the can opener, but you probably could have picked 
plenty of two or three calls there. The Bruins are going to be shorthanded. Boston penalty number 27, two minutes stripping. Yeah, he did go down by mistake. Back in the day, that was a good defensive play. Stick between the legs, hold the man up, allow your partner to go retrieve the puck. Not allowed anymore. Gianta, who brings a lot of energy to this club, a club that could use that kind of energy, and they could use some kind of power play to shift the momentum in this hockey game right now, trailing the Bruins 1-0. 0 oh, for 8 in their last three games for New Jersey after a productive spell in which they had three power play goals in three games. Gomez holding against Bergeron with McQuaid also on that side. Bernier turns to the forehand, but the Bruins descend on him. Seidenberg and McQuaid, the defensive pair nearest the goal. Gomez with Eliash in the bumper position, a high slot. Bernier jamming in front of the goal. Shellenau, the hard shooter, out alone at the blue line. Gomez holds the puck at the half board. Dangles it with attacking zone time mounting on the power play. Gomez holds off Bergeron's stick and back through the neutral zone. Bergeron altered the position of his stick just at the last moment. Gomez catches the cross ice pass. Sends it low, gets it back from Bernier. Eliash at the dot to Gomez. To Eliash, the shot off Bernier's leg. Bernier making the screen in front of Svedberg. Jelena tries a backhand pass through Marchand. Now wheels the forehand around to Gomez. To Jelena, the bomb and a save by Svedberg. That's what Eric Jelena does best. Yeah, but you hope to get a little bit of a screen. I mean, that's a 60 footer. Even though he can shoot it, it's a one-timer. Svedberg gets a real good look at it. Bernier's going to play that short side post. Eliash is going out for that bumper position when the Bruins put good pressure by Marchand. If they're not going to move that puck to Eliash, she's still going to get somebody in front of the Bruin goaltender. Chara carries all the way to the attacking zone, but then Zidlitsky takes the puck away. Chara face to face with Tutu in a pretty good battle. Henrique penetrates, but Bartkowski takes it away, and Erickson swivels the puck down ice. 20 seconds to go on the power play for the New Jersey Devils. Daniel Paez, goal in the first period, holding up for the Bruins so far. Zidlitsky comes off the boards. Erickson, the closest man. Zajac's one-timer saves Spedberg, the rebound, Chara. Henrique wins the race to the puck. It's back to five on five after three shots on goal during the power play. Josephson off the end boards. Chara gets to the puck before Henrique. Henrique wins it back, throws it across the middle. New Jersey in the middle of a change. Room service bounce for Travis. Zajac tries to throw it middle. Barkowski can't ride Josephson off the puck. Havlat gives it back to Steven Gianta, who drew that penalty. Now Havlat touches it back. Larson, Havlat trying to pick up the bouncing pass from Henry. Hamilton ices it, and the faceoff will come back to Nicholas Spedberg's end of the ice. Joy Patrice Bergeron, 98.5, the sports hub, and some of your favorite Bruins for the eighth annual Cuts for a Cause on March 24th. At the Boston Park Plaza Hotel, the Bruins will have their heads shaved by auction winners to show their support and raise money for the Boston Bruins Foundation and the Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center. To purchase your ticket, visit bostonbruins.com slash cuts for a cause. Chris Kelly wins the faceoff against Steven Gianta, but good work from Havlat keeps the puck alive for New Jersey. Hamilton. Takes the hip check from Zidlitsky to flip the puck off the boards of the neutral zone. Havlat looks up the seam for Gianta going between Krug and Barkowski. Krug takes Gianta to the far side. Those are two diminutive but highly competitive players. Lucic gives the pass to Pasternak. Pasternak glides over the line. Now wrists it into Green's legs. Gets it right back. Throws it off Havlat skates. Havlat flies the zone. Pasternak tries to juggle it past Bernier but can't successfully. Havlat over the line. The snap shot and a kick saves Svedberg. Steering the rebound all the way past the hash marks. Lucic gathers in the puck, works against Fraser. Goes shoulder to shoulder with him twice. Merrill over to Elias. Spooner knocks it out of the air. John Merrill controls the puck with less than three minutes to go in the second. Merrill straight ahead through the center circle off Seidenberg's skate. McQuaid gets it out, but the Bruins cannot get the puck deep. 
New Jersey getting a little bit of rhythm after the power play. Fraser indirect for Eliash. He redirects it, but Seidenberg picks it up before the puck gets forward to the goal line. McQuaid the diagonal. Riley Smith takes the bump from Eliash. Fraser thought about trying to nurse an icing call out of it, but knew it wouldn't happen. Yeah, the Bruins got to get back to making a few more plays coming out of their own zone. Find some rhythm of their offense again. Fraser indirect pass to Soderberg to Zajac. Zajac closes. The shot goes off Pae's stick and wildly wide. Erickson at the end of the stick can't get it past Zidlitsky. Tutu shoves the puck through the corner. Hamilton pries it away from Camilleri. Soderberg aerial pass. Camilleri on the end boards, but Green pitches down. Hamilton wins it out of the air. Zajac in front of the penalty ball. Zajac through Erickson, gives back to Green. Green regroups for the minute and 45 to go in the second period. New Jersey really with its best consistent attack rhythm of the game is Havlat all the way through. Tries the wrap around Hamilton, blocks it. Camilleri is there, but he can't maintain possession, keep it forward to the goal line. Here's Zidlitsky with Svedberg without his stick, firing it wide. Hamilton finds Svedberg's stick for him. Green, Zubris, the touch pass. Merrill, hard off the boards. And it twists around for Gomez. Zubris at the goal line. Furlan bangs with him. Zubris shields the puck. Steven Gianta chucks it to Gomez. Gomez uses Zubris' big body, turns, fires. Saved by Svedberg. Long rebound all the way out to the near boards. Merrill tries to get it low for Zubris. Seidberg gets a piece of it. And the Bruins enter the final minute of the second period, struggling to make plays out of their own end. Yeah, and Havlad, the uh, Bruins just gave way too much ice. They were either too spread apart in the neutral zone, the 2D, or just a late reaction by Dougie Hamilton, thinking his partner was going to seal off that area of the ice. Seidenberg loading up for a big hit, and that enables Caron to make the high clear. Fraser gives it right back to Caron. Takes a check from Rutu to get it to Smith. Smith into the attacking zone to Bergeron. Bergeron's shot, Fraser the block. Bergeron. Tries to chip it past Frazier, keeps the legs moving. Frazier goes for tripping with 26 seconds to go in the third period. But it was a play coming out of the defense, uh, second period, pardon me, but it was a play coming out of the defensive zone that created the opportunity penalty 32, two minutes tripping. to go on the power play. Exactly right. It's good effort. Jordan Grant stays with it as well. When that puck comes up the wall, you're going to follow up the play, protect it as best you can. Great little one-handed pass by Caron. And now you got a little something going as the line change continues. Smith and Bergeron work the puck, and even though the shot gets blocked, that puck pursuit by Bergeron, he's going to just chip it in order to get some separation. Frazier extends that right leg and knee. Bruins on the power play. It's the 11th time that Patrice Bergeron has drawn a penalty to put the Bruins on the power play this season, tying Louis Erickson for the team lead in that category. Tory Krug, the backhand down the boards for a spooner. Krug hammers it off the wall all the way through the corner to Erickson to Spooner. Spooner to Erickson with Bergeron in front. The pass deflects all the way back to Chara at the blue line. Less than 10 seconds to go in the period. The Bruins have got to hurry. Spooner throws it high in front off a stick. Larson will bleed the clock dry in the corner. The Bruins will open the third period on the power play. Still looking for the finishing touch. Well, pretty good push by the Devils in the second half of that second period. A number of good looks. Svedberg was real strong. We put out a couple important saves. Well, he made a few more after that. But yeah, the Bruins, when they make plays coming out of their own zone, they're the better team tonight. That's what they got to do in the third. Boston Bruins Hockey on Nesson is brought to you by the Hyundai Elantra by Amica Insurance. Now with new lower auto insurance rates for Massachusetts drivers. By Verizon Files, making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet. That's powerful. By Subaru of New England. And by TD Bank, America's most convenient bank. 1-0 Bruins on the strength of Daniel Paez. Goal eight and a half minutes into the opening period. Let's fly to the bench for an interview with Brick and Bruins assistant coach Doug Huda brought to you by Cape Air. Your wings to 44 cities in the U.S., the Caribbean, and Micronesia. Book your tickets at capeair.com now.
Doug, pretty strong opening 20 minutes. Uh, what did you like in that first period that maybe wasn't there in the second? Well, we got our forecheck going in the first period, and we had uh, some good chances by getting in after them and playing in their zone. Uh, second period, we turned some pucks over in the neutral zone. They got a power play. They got a little momentum. And then uh, they caught us out there on a couple of longer shifts and took it to us. So we got to get back to grinding down low and keeping the puck in their zone. Well, after the six-goal outburst against Chicago, goals have been a little tough to come by over the last several periods. What's the message to the guys in the room, this being a one nothing game? Well, obviously, we want to get pucks in deep, but we want to make sure that we're staying around their net. And, you know, there's going to be rebounds, and we're just going to make sure that we're hungry around their net, trying to pound them home. Good luck in the third period. Thanks a lot, guys. Game summary brought to you by your New England Chevy dealers. A lot of frustration on uh, social media. People venting their spleens over the uh, adequate attacking zone time, but the inadequate ability of the Bruins to beat Corey Schneider. They open the third period on a power play, a minute 35 to go on it. Yeah, and it, and it the flip side of that, Jack, is you got to also be a realist. you got a real good goaltender in Schneider. you got a team, New Jersey, that, that, that defends pretty well. And that's where your special team should really have an impact. you got a power play to start the third period, a chance to extend the lead. Now's the time. Hey, you can score two goals and win this hockey game, but now's the time to extend the lead. Bergeron takes it away from Steven Gianta twice in a span of about four seconds. Spooner through Gianta's stick to Krug, back to Spooner. Down the boards against Larson, hits the brakes and turns off the backhand. Spooner, the short pass to Erickson, gets stood up on Larson's check. Green carries it along, finds the opening, and scales at the length of the rink. Yeah, Spooner needs to go back to the point there. That bump of play wasn't there in that instance. Spread it out, get it back to that left point, move it around. Hamilton gives to Lucic, fresh legs on the ice, Soderberg on the net drive. Krug throws it into Schneider, gets it loose across the front. Eliash calmly strokes the puck off the boards and banks it out of the zone. Riley Smith sends Pasternak ahead, the pass too far forward for Lucic. Merrill gives it away to Pasternak. Pasternak holds Smith at the blue line. Pasternak has Soderberg right in front of Schneider. Lucic at the hash marks. Pasternak gives back to Smith. Chara tries to get it through Zubris. Nothing doing there. Zubris up to his own blue line, and he sends it the length of the rink. Yeah, not a good decision by Riley Smith right there. Camilleri just cheating on Chara. Not the play to be made. One shot on goal during the power players. Pasternak the wrist shot, killing the rebound. Pasternak scores! David Pasternak in the vulnerable minute as New Jersey still had penalty killers on the ice. Yeah, and Schneider wants some kind of goaltender interference here on Kelly, who's right at the top of the crease. Pasternak just kind of weaves and waits and shows patience right down the middle of the offensive zone. Looking to make a play, looking to make a play. Follows up his own shot. There's your contact. You can see Schneider down on his knees. He's looking for some kind of call. Give me an opportunity to make a save on the rebound, but New Jersey allowed too much of a seam in the middle of their own zone. And Pasternak with a follow-up of his own chance with Kelly getting to the front of the net. Bruins extend the lead. Dennis Seidenberg throws it off Zidlitsky's body. Bernier off the skate of Havlat and the plays offside as he goes in ahead of the puck. He just continues to impress, doesn't he, Pasternak? He just, he wants to learn so much. He pays attention. He talks to the veteran players. He watches the work habits of a Patrice Bergeron, whether it's at a morning skate or in practice, certainly in games. And you try to feed off that, learn off that, learn from the veteran guys, the guys that know how to play this game, and try to incorporate it and combine it with your skill set. Goes right to the edge of cocky and then pulls it back <laughs> half a step, right? <laughs> So tremendously self-confident, but doesn't try silly stuff that puts the team in jeopardy. Tremendous sense of when it's time to try something and when he can try to make a low percentage play and not hurt the team. It's amazing how many of those low percentage plays turn into high percentage plays with his skill set. Brilliant future for David Pasternak, the youngest player in the National Hockey League and the youngest player in the American Hockey League this year as well. Jordan Tutu gives it back. Mark Zidlitsky gives it away to Marsh, and Zidlitsky chops it ahead. Henrik to Eliash. Eliash to Henrik, working against Hamilton off. Hamilton's stick ramps up off the end glass. Now down off the strings, back of the goal. 
Soderberg clamps down on Henrique. He holds off Soderberg. Green's one-timer off. Chara caroms around. Henrique can't fish it out of his skate. Svedberg down and across the goal from where he wants to be. Henrique unable to leverage it past Soderberg. Here comes Marchand with Erickson far side. Marchand gets to the middle, drops it off. Here's Krug down the slot. Guns it in front. The turnaround backhand chop. Erickson just wide on the glove side post. Tangled up in a check right in front of the goal. Even though it's a broken play, it's uh, again Krug with that mobility coming late on the on the change on the back end. Krug barrels over the line. The wrist shot saved by Schneider. Erickson turns the goal. Fraser has the angle on him. And back up ice, jo Jacob Josephson. <gasps> Lofts it off the boards. McQuaid gets underneath Zobras. Zobras takes McQuaid hard to the corner. McQuaid down, and Zobras is going to ride that horse as long as he can get away with it. Krug one hands it from behind the net. Here's Pasternak on the quick turn, accelerating toward Fraser. Goes outside, inside. Fraser plays the body, and the puck stays put for Jelena. Into the center dot, looking for Gianta. But again, the Bruins get back, and Pasternak is one of the guys on the back check. Lucic along the end boards. Powers pass Jelena, Pasternak run over by Gianta. Barkowski wide on the stick side. A good effort to get back toward the puck by Corey Schneider. Dennis Seidenberg turns the goal with Gomez chasing. Seidenberg takes the space in front of him, gains the line, throws it off the boards past John Merrill. Martin Havlak, Lucic cuts off his path. Furland bangs Rutsu and the puck comes loose. Lucic slides it deep. Furland gets in first. Rutsu unloads on Furland. Kelly to the blue line to Caron. Can't chip it through Havlat's stick cleanly. Penalty coming up against Boston here. Havlat glides down the left wing. The chip pass. Cross ice to Zidlitsky. Schneider off for the extra skater. Zidlitsky had the wrap around as Fedberg stumbled and left his stick behind. Extra skater on the ice. Six skating against five for New Jersey with the delay penalty coming on Boston. That's possession. <laughs> Barely touches the puck. It was a 50-50 for the referee's rule. The Bruins had possession. And Chris Kelly's barking all the way to the box. Yeah, there's a little bit of stick work on the back check that's going to send him to the penalty box. Boston with 23 minor penalties for hooking. There's the stick work. It was Kelly that was deep in the zone and made a nice pass to Jordan Caron coming right down the middle of the offensive end. Caron had a little trouble getting it off that left hip in a good shooting position when he fumbles a little bit. Now the turnover is a result. And just a little bit of stick work in the eyes of the official worthy of a penalty. Bruins shorthanded. The Bruins went up by two on the road this year, have killed 10 of 11. New Jersey had four shots on goal in its first power play of the night. Travis Zajac wide of the goal, one of Brick's pet peeves. Look for the <laughs> half hour special sometime in the future. And the puck clears itself. Henrique gains the line and stops middle of the blue line, finds a little bit of space, comes down the seam. Bergeron and Seidenberg taking that space away. Josephson at the hash marks. Henrique shovels it back to him. Josephson to Henrique, turns to the forehand, but Spedberg pokes the puck away. Josephson holds. Marchand in the neighborhood. Char the defenseman on that side. Henrique turns, backhand, forehand, Sager scores! The Bruins allowed the turn by the low man. And there was an open side. Yeah, they allowed it not once but twice. And uh, New Jersey wisely will just keep going to this play until you prove you can't stop it. Svedberg made a nice stick check on the first attempt by Henrik. But this time he's able to spin, almost get to his forehand. When it's not there, that second layer is Zajac. And the Bruins have to kind of collapse to that puck where Henrik is. Seidberg's going to have to come across to try to help Jara, and that allows Zajac to come in off that off-point position off the side of the umbrella. And he's got a lot of net he's not going to miss. Back to a one-goal game. Fraser turns his goal. An obscure but interesting statistic. The uh, Bruins 
have had 21 different skaters in the penalty bench for the power play goals they've allowed. That's the first so-called skate of shame for Chris Kelly this season. 21 different skaters. Marshand is the team leader, having made that uh, ugly trip four times back to the Boston bench. Erickson tries to spring Pae. So New Jersey scoring on its only shot on goal so far in the first nearly seven minutes of the third period. Henrique and Josephson getting the assists on Travis Zajac's power play goal. There's Ajak, it's his fourth power play goal this season, his ninth overall. Bernier in the corner against Barkowski, brings it back to Green along the line to Larson, the wrist shot off Seidenberg. Ricochets around in front, Bernier couldn't settle it again with an open side. Spooner taps down to the corner. Green has the puck pop over his back. And Pasternak right in front looking for Lucic. But Larson makes a nice place to stab it out of the crease. Svedberg with Elias closing. Svedberg taps over to Chara. He whips the backhand off the boards. Pasternak loops it up across the center circle. Larson gloves it down inside his own line. Banks it off the boards. Chara drills it in deep. Furlan goes to work on the forward check. Zajac gives him the space, then takes the puck away. Camilleri. Rolls it along the kick plate. Caron pressuring Larson. 2-2. Chips it out of the zone. Hamilton doesn't get anything on it. Here comes Camilleri. Turns off the backhand. Goes to the forehand. The backhand. 2-2 two -two scores. Two goals in two minutes and nine seconds for the New Jersey Devils. It is 2-2 in the third. A bit of a gift, too, really, when you think about it. Dougie Hamilton has a chance to make a play about 10 feet inside the defensive blue line. It's just a chip out at the center ice. There's that puck. Actually, it's right at the defensive blue line. Had a number of things he could have done there, except the one choice that he made, which is just try to whack that puck back up ice. And when you don't have it, and you fan on it, and you're drifting away from the puck, here come the Devils. Camilleri gets inside position on Chara. 2-2 comes late. And like Zajac, a lot of net to tie this hockey game. Well, even though this is hockey night in New England, look at it from the flip side in terms of perspective. The New Jersey Devils were quoted as having said, this game is the season. It's a four-pointer, and if New Jersey has any faint hope of crawling into that bottom wild card slot in the Eastern Conference, it is about coming away with a regulation win tonight. They've put themselves in position to do it. Riley Smith closes the pass too far forward for Marshan. Krug right back. Smith holds the shot. Save. Schneider in the rebound hops almost all the way to the hash marks. If Smith handles that puck a little cleaner. He could probably get that quick shot off. Short side before Schneider can get reset. Krug bunts it forward. Marchand for Bergeron. Bergeron against Fraser on the far side. Gomez patient with the puck. Slides it past Henrique, but he gets it off Seidenberg skates. Now Barkowski controls. Matt Barkowski, couple of quick steps. Flips the puck through the corner. Fraser sees Soderberg in his face. Rolls it through the corner. Seidenberg lifts the backhand of the corner. Pae turns away from Josephson's pressure. Soderberg bounces it back to Seidenberg. Indirect off the end boards to Erickson. Erickson holds, throws it right up the slot. Nobody home, and Steven Gianta legs it out to the red line. He breaks with Jacob Josephson and throws it in deep. Seidenberg on it. Josephson puts the body on Seidenberg and wrestles with him. Pae goes down in the corner, and Gianta's right there to bring it back to Merrill. Merrill fakes the shot, draws Erickson, wrists it low. Gianta has to try to flatten the bouncing puck, flings it off the end boards. Pae extends the stick and then draws it around for Erickson. Erickson slams the puck off the boards. Merrill knocks it right down. Zubris gains the line again quickly. Larson shot off. Seidenberg stick saved by Svedberg. Loose in the crease with Bernier, the big body, jamming. And Svedberg clamps down and covers it with a trapper. 10.09 to go in the game. And you know what? The barn's starting to smoke. It's 2-2, the Bruins and the Devils. Zajac on the power play. And 
Then just 209 later, Jordan 2 2 made it 2 2. Seidenberg hammers the puck off the boards. Here comes 2 2. Working toward Barkowski. Barkowski plays the body. Seidenberg back of the goal. A shifty move to get the puck past Cavallari, who has extended his scoring streak. Camilleri, the self pass against Bartkowski. Off the corner boards, back to Eric Jelen on the high back end. Kelly gloves it down, but Tutu steals it. Does Ajak to Tutu, the shot, and a save by Svedberg off his hip to the corner. Furlan goes in to try to win the puck battle. Seidenberg helps out. New Jersey with a desperate surge of energy here in the third period to come from 2 0 down to tie this thing. Kelly and Tutu, now the puck squirts to Zajac, out the middle of the line, Fraser shot off, Seidenberg stick, hits glass, Camilleri spins it hard through the slot, Bernier picks it up at the red line, the play's all in Boston's end of the ice. Jelena, center dot, Camilleri can't receive it on the backhand, Chara gives over to Bartkowski, Chara with Pasternak crossing to his right, through Spooner, it rolls all the way forward, no ice, and Larson goes D to D to Green. The puck gets away from him. Pasternak pressures. Spooner can't keep the puck in the attacking zone. Now Chara off the boards. Lucic takes the hit from Larson. Green turns his net with Pasternak closing in on it. Henry swivels it back to Larson. Snaps the pass to Bernier. He redirects through the corner. Svedberg waiting for it as Henry comes in quickly. Hamilton against the grain to Lucic. Josephson takes the puck away. Henrique on the half boards. Tries to slip it between Lucic and Spooner. It goes up in the air. Now Henrique swivels it off a of skate. Spooner off Henrique's leg. Josephson at the hash marks and Svedberg gobbles it up. The Bruins looking a little jumpy to say the least in their own end of the ice. Having surrendered a two goal lead here in the third. 2-2 game, third period. Certain areas of the ice you just have to own and not make mistakes and uh, take care of the puck. And one of those areas is about 10 feet inside your own blue line. Lucic had a chance to get that puck in the center ice. Or maybe a chance for Pasta not to make the play. Spooner had an opportunity. All three failed to get it out. Now you give up a shot on goal. Cavalieri now with five goals, two assists, seven points in five consecutive games. Jordan 2-2, two, two, two goals, three assists. And five points, or uh, yeah, five points in five consecutive games. Catching all new Instigators tonight at 10.30, follow Nesson Sports Today. Choose your side for the debate as Dale, Billy, and Mike Morrison discuss the impact of Patrick Kane's injury on the balance of power out west, as well as the latest trade deadline rumors. That's tonight on Instigators, presented by Electric Supply Center, driven to help you compete. Well, it's all about winning the puck, winning a shift. And getting the next goal for the Bruins. Bergeron blocks Green's pass into the middle. Zubris over to Larson with room. His drive and a save by Spencer with Bernie right there at the top of the blue paint. Marshan swivels in. Smith fights through Zubris's stick check to get the puck to Bergeron. Bergeron the hard backhand right through the slot. Marshan just passed the post, but it's ruled the puck was played with a high stick. And the faceoff's going to come outside the attacking line. Well, after initially having a tough time getting the puck out of the zone, Riley Smith finally was able to make a play to Bergeron. Bergeron's trying to lay one high on the back end across to Marshan and Smith on the net drive. But uh, you can see from the replay, it was played with a high stick, possession to Boston, so faceoff in the neutral zone. Soderbergh, Pye, Erickson, Chara, and Hamilton for the Bruins. Rutu, Gomez, Havlat left to right across the forwards with the defensive pairing. Fraser left and Jelena right for Lou Lamorello's New Jersey Devils. Fraser the backhand out to Havlat. He redirects the puck. Hamilton has it backing into the Boston zone with Gomez nearby. Soderbergh coming back deep for the puck. Lobs the high backhand. Pae on the left wing working against Jelena. Pae shoves it across to Soderbergh. Soderbergh knocked off balance on Fraser's hit. Fraser has the opening. Rutu makes the turn with possession. The cross corner dump. Shara goes to the boards to win it against Havlat. Erickson cuts back to get away from Gomez, who skates to the New Jersey bench for fresh legs. Shara 
hard around into the zone. It rides high on the boards. 2 2 indirect for Jelena. Nudges it forward for Zajac. Zajac and 2 2, the two goal scorers for New Jersey here in the third period after the Bruins went up by a pair. Seidenberg trying to muscle it past Camilleri. Camilleri on the end boards, brings it all the way back. Green to Larson, slings it low. Camilleri high slot, Zajac. As the Devils begin to create triangles in the attacking zone, five on five. Barkowski's strong on the stick against Camilleri, so he can't do much with the puck. Bergeron to Marchand to Smith. Riley Smith up to the attacking line. The Bruins change out four skaters behind Riley Smith's rush. Andy Green on the turn, reaches around 2-2 to keep possession of the puck. Fires it in deep. McQuaid with Henrique on his back. Crude under pressure from Josephson. Henrique tries to chip it past Fedberg. Josephson misses the goal wide on the rebound. Furland gives back to McQuaid. Hard indirect. Krug does nicely to handle the puck. Furland stumbles at the line. Henrique to Josephson. The shot off Furland's stick and goes wide of the goal. Merrill takes a huge hit from McQuaid. They both go down. Josephson through the corner to Gianta. Gianta gets a little space along the boards. Merrill's wrist shot. Henrique with the tip. Josephson on the backhand, right in front. Gianta saved by Svedberg. Caron in the corner. Henrique unloads and drops Caron. McQuaid wedging against the boards. Kelly off the Deadwood. Krug in panic mode, just trying to get it out of the zone. Caron can't clear. Kelly through the seam to Caron. Caron up ahead for Furlan. He knew the hit was coming from Merrill, and he got knocked forward. Here comes Patrick Eliash through the center circle. Off of Pasternak's legs. Zubris is wrist shot, saves Spetberg the rebound. And the Devils are rightly complaining that the puck was not tied up. And the whistle came. The Bruins catch a break with 4.41 to go in a tie game. Key play brought to you by your New England Audi dealers. A couple of goals in a hurry for New Jersey. Well, that foul play goal, if you remember, Kelly really complaining about the stick check penalty, and uh, you can understand why, because the foul play goal was big. Bruins allowed that play down low. Henrique took advantage of it. Good follow-up by Zajac. Similar in, on the, uh, the second strike, which came in uh, very quickly after. Again, this time it was 2-2 coming late. Fraser's shot deflects up into the protective netting over the high glass. Well, not to beat a dead or dying horse, but since the first period, we were talking about not only the quality goaltending of Corey Schneider, but the inability of the Bruins to finish and to get the grimy goals. Because as good as Schneider has been, there have been opportunities for rebound. And New Jersey, while a strong team at home, the Devils 15-9-7 in this building coming into tonight, are not exactly an awesome hockey team. They are desperately trying to hang on to hope to make the playoffs well out of it. Yeah, but a team like that has some doubt, Jack, and you have to take advantage of that doubt. And what's the best way to do it? Keep the pressure on in the offensive zone like you did in the first period. Make plays coming out of your own zone under a little bit of pressure. They established that offensive zone time they did in the opening 20 minutes, and then they score a big, you know, almost power play goal, I guess you call it, to uh, extend the lead to 2 nothing. And then a couple of mistakes, and you find the puck back in your net a couple of times to tie it. Seidenberg bounces off the boards in front of the Boston bench after a big collision with Rutu. Shell and I, or rather Fraser from the point. Rutu jams the puck around. Pasternak sees Fraser coming, sidesteps the check. Bruins had numbers, but Pasternak's pass flutters all the way to the near side boards. Zidlitsky with less than four minutes to go in the game. Patrick Eliash surveys the ice in front of him, works away from Louis Erickson. Past the red line, he throws it in behind Nicholas Svedberg, who chips it past Chara. Miscommunication in the Boston defensive zone. Dougie Hamilton. Bounces it diagonally out ahead of Louis Erickson against Adam Larson. Erickson down on his knees, working the puck along the boards. Gets back up. Soderberg pries it loose. Gives back to Hamilton. He closes. The wrist shot goes off Zubris's skates. Charo holds. 
Riss it off the corner boards. Erickson tries to slip it past Larson. Nothing doing there. Larson on the block. Pachara keeps it in. Quickly to Hamilton. The wrist shot. Knocked down as Green blocks it while wrestling against Erickson right in front of the goal. Hamilton laterally. Pae gains the line onside the shot wide on the glove side. Hamilton shoves 2-2 out of the way, and the puck drifts all the way to the Boston end. Yeah, tough luck for Dougie Hamilton. It was a nice play along the wall by Erickson and Soderberg. Soderberg finds Hamilton coming late. And a little trouble healing the puck, and the shooting lane never materialized. Camilleri, who is on a five-game scoring streak. Seidenberg for Boston. Matt Bartkowski back to Dennis Seidenberg. The long diagonal. Marchand on the pivot with Bergeron on the net drive. The wrist shot off the defenseman. Hits the corner boards, and Smith picks it up. Slips the backhand. Bergeron back to Bartkowski. The puck hops on him, and he has to come back to the neutral zone. Clicking toward two minutes to go in the game. The Bruins were up 2-0. Two minutes into the third period. Steven Gianta's shot deflects off a stick and goes off glass. Ryan Spooner through the passing lane. Pasternak slings it around through the corner underneath Schneider's stick. Spooner to Lucic. Here's Pasternak. The dart. A save by Schneider. A game saver by Corey Schneider with less than two minutes to go as Pasternak had a great chance. Spooner gives to Hamilton the shot. Saved by Schneider. Corey Schneider slamming the door on the Bruins. Well, it starts with a wraparound dump in by Pasternak that Spooner's going to get on the opposite side of the ice, and Lucic is going to go below the goal line looking for the puck. It's a nice play, and he's able to squeeze this puck short side out, and Pasternak walks right into one inside the dot, right around the hash mark. He tees up that big slap shot. It's labeled on the blocker side, but Schneider denies him. Martin Havlad with a minute and a half to go. Cross ice for Tuomo Rutu. Barkowski wins the race to the puck. To Seidenberg off the boards, but it bounces down to Zidlitsky. New Jersey with possession. Fraser goes north and south. Off Rutu's skate. Erickson shuts down the space. It tumbles loose to Havlat. Pae takes the hit, but the puck comes right to Zidlitsky. Gains the Boston line. Swivels against Bartkowski. Gomez throws it into the slot. Havlat turns, fires, saves Smedberg. The rebound right to the dot. And Pae chucks it off the boards. No icing here. Both teams change out. A minute to go in the game. The Bruins have not trailed tonight. They led 1-0 in the first. 2-0 in the third. Bernier's drive and a save by Spenberg. The rebound all the way to the far boards. Marchand leads Bergeron off the stick forward to the red line and all the way in behind Schneider. The goalie plays it around. Marchand knocks it down on the boards. He's got Smith top of the circle of the pass. Intercepted. Henry one hands it to Eliash. The long shot in on Spenberg. He gloves it down. Eliash blocks the attempt to pass it off glass. Hamilton with 25 seconds to go in the game. Flips past Eliash. Hamilton over the line with Marshan nearby. Smith's quick shot off Gianta's leg. Smith gets it back. 12 seconds to go. Gianta to the boards. Smith gives it away to Zajac. Zajac forward for Camilleri. Camilleri shot saved by Svedberg. Barkowski nudges it out of the middle. Green fires it off Svedberg's leg pad. And the horn sounds. It'll be a point of peace. And to overtime, they will go. Well, a couple of guys you want shooting the puck. They got it. Pasta knocked the original one with Schneider robbed him. And right here, Camilleri at the end of regulation tries to go across his body, far side. Get a look at just how close this was on that stick side. Right pad extended Svedberg as the clock was winding down. We'll be back four on four, five minutes, sudden death right after this. Game report brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. Daniel Paye early, David Pasternak kind of late, 140 into the third period. But the Bruins, who used to be a lights-out team, went up by two at any point in the game, who used to be the NHL's most dominant third-period team in terms of goal differential, have been unable to finish off opponents, have been unable to make those 2-0 leads or two goal leads at any point automatic. 
and New Jersey bounced back with two goals in 209. And here we are going overtime. Yeah, it speaks to that mental toughness that needs to be strengthened by the Boston Bruins, especially if you're going to be a playoff team and fend off all comers that are trying to track you down in the standings. And this extra point here is critical tonight. So the long change. And the extra five minute period, four on four. Travis Zajac works against Louis Erickson. Goes all the way forward to the goal line. Sends the backhand out to Zidlitsky to Merrill. Merrill around the perimeter. Zidlitsky waits. Hamilton blocks the centering pass. Pies right on it. Slips it to Hamilton. Zajac takes away Hamilton's space. And New Jersey continues. It's had possession throughout this first minute of overtime. Bruins change out man by man. Bergeron, Marchand. Here's Gomez racing forward. The shot saved by Spedberg, and Bergeron's there to rescue the puck. He had Marchand in the seam. Does not connect, and it's icing against Boston. Well, the Bruins started the overtime with that three forward one defenseman combination. It was the Soderberg line along with Dougie Hamilton. And two of the guys were able to make the line change. Louis Erickson had to stay. And even with him staying, there was a lot of open ice for Gomez to walk in around the dot. Tries to go far side low. But now the Bruins guilty of the ice. So Hamilton and Erickson still on the ice. Bergeron and Marcia are the only ones coming out. So oh, Julian Ups to use that timeout right here. Yeah, Hamilton and Erickson had started the overtime, so 57 seconds into their shift, which is a little long, even five on five. Flo Julian trying to achieve the precious points. Here are the four goals of the game, starting with Daniel Pai's second game opener in as many games. Yeah, started with a great breakout pass by Kowski's going to find uh, Danny Pai actually in that cross corner dump with purpose. Fundamental hockey, Soderberg, the first man pressure, Erickson, the second man up the wall, seal it off, take it away and set up Pae, and then in the third period, Pasternak with Kelly on the net drive, right at the top of the blue paint, gets his own rebound, and it looked like the game was pretty much in control at 2-0. And then a power play goal by Zajac after that low play, they used it once, they used it twice to Henrique, and he's able to spin to the front of the net, and even though it's not really a set play to get the puck to Zajac, it's effective. And then the Bruins failed to make a play at the defensive blue line, and that leads to a wide-open follow-up by Jordan Tutu to tie the game. Gomez and Camilleri up front. Green and Jelena, the defensive pair. Jelena's bomb goes off Erickson and whistles wide of the glove side post. Green holds. Self-pass past Marchand all the way to the corner. He banks it. Bergeron intercepts the pass intended for Gomez, then goes indirect for Erickson, who waits for the puck to trickle between the skates. Goes laterally for Hamilton, jumping up on the far side. The wrist shot blocker stops Schneider, a hot rebound off the end glass. Bergeron keeps it in the attacking zone. Krug fresh off the Boston bench. The stop start on Jelena, then slides it to Marchand. Marchand shot saved by Schneider, pop-up rebound. Riley Smith kicks it to the near corner. Camilleri tries to take the space away. Smith goes against the grain, turns out of the corner, has Marchand nearby. Smith's shot saved, Schneider no rebound. And then Marchand goes tumbling over Jelena's stick. No harm, no foul, say the referees. And Marchand certainly might have helped him along. <laughs> So they're just going to say, on you go, boys. That's pretty, uh, I mean, you could easily make the argument for some kind of penalty here. A chop to the skates and a trip. I'm going to guess, Jack, if it's in the opposite direction, there might have been a greater chance of a penalty. I'm not sure. Not sure the legs needed to come up above a crossbar <laughs> height there. Lucic to Krug, Krug to Pasternak, same rebound, Spooner. Now Pasternak, couple of kids on with Lucic. The Bruins with some attacking zone time here in the overtime. Lucic can't find it, Merrill does. Indirect to Eliash, to Havlat, back to Eliash. Couple of veteran forwards on for New Jersey, but Eliash's pass splits Zidlitsky and Merrill. John Merrill. 
returns to Zidlitsky now Pasternak accelerates on the forecheck Merrill a little bit off his edge stumbles in the corner Havlat back to the New Jersey defenseman halfway through the five minute sudden death period Patrick Elias goes cross ice Elias has an open side with Havlat in front Spedberg makes the blockers stop with the paddle down Lucic four on two up ice Krug with Pasternak the trailer Pasternak to Spooner he scores Ryan Spooner's first National Hockey League goal is a game winner and the Bruins rescue one after blowing a 2-0 lead in the third period Well, the Devils try to make a play to the net in the offensive zone, and they're just too committed in this four-on-four four deep. And the Bruins turn that chance from uh, a bad angle into numbers. And this is a line change going on, and there's some unsurety as to who's going to do what. You can see Havlet trying to get back. Now the Bruins got four-on-two. Krug explodes into the zone. He leaves that drop pass for Pasternak right at the right time. Now Pasternak has all kinds of options. He very quickly keeps that puck off his right hip as if he's going to let a shot go. And he's able to slide it to Spooner. And Spooner able to take that quick snap shot. Looked like it went under the arm and then up underneath the crossbar. And the Bruins with a huge two points here in the overtime. Well, Dale... Devils were flopping around on the deck like a landed fish. The Bruins were trying to stab him, and finally, Spooner stuck a fork in him. Well, thank goodness somebody <laughs> did. Coming up on Ace Ticket Bruins Overtime Live, Ryan Spooner strikes in OT. Jack and Brick will get the reaction of the head coach, Claude Julian, to a couple of crucial points here tonight. The Arizona Coyotes sitting here in Boston waiting for the Bruins. That's the opponent tomorrow night. Ace Ticket Bruins Overtime Live is coming right up.